Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Business Data Science with Delali. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, the design uh, of experiment. Uh, if you have been following us, you realize that we've been having a lot of discussions about experimentation in business, uh, metrics and measurement uh, you know, in a business setup. And today, I want us to talk specifically about uh, designing uh, and running an experiment, okay? Now, in one of our videos, we actually talk about the five steps in an experimentation in business, okay? We talk about the first step as coming up with the objective and the hypothesis. The second step was, you know, aligning on the business metrics of measurement, okay, within the experiment. And then the third step is actually designing and implementing the experiment, okay? So today, our discussion is, is going to be focused on the designing and implementing the experiment, which is step number three, okay? Now, this is not something that we can discuss actually, uh, you know, in a short video because there, there there's a whole lot of discipline in statistics called design and analysis of experiment where you study about all of this. And I remember I took a full semester class uh, you know, for four good months, just learning about designing and analyzing controlled experiments. Uh, but our goal here is we are going to simplify this in business terms so that everyone can really understand and know what to be be, be concerned and what to keep keep their eyes on when their companies are, are running, uh, you know, experiments. Okay, what actually happened in this step of the experimentation process in business? Well, basically, this is where, you know, all the tests, uh, you know, design, the full plan of the analysis, you know, collecting data, how do you select your sample, how many sample uh, do you select, how do you actually randomize, all of those things are planned and documented in this step of the experimentation process okay so designing uh, and implementing the experiment also this is the stage where we actually assign what we call uh, treatment to our test group so whatever marketing offer for example that you want to test this is the this is the the step where you say this group received 10 percent off this other group receives 30 percent off right so this is really the stage where all of those things uh, are done and so you work with marketing people you work with engineers you know based on your business context and what exactly you are you are testing okay in fact to make this very simplified i'm going to actually approach this in the form of like certain series of questions to answer uh, and at the end of the day usually we like this to be documented and reviewed by every stakeholder so everyone everyone knows uh, exactly what we are doing and how we are collecting data and how we are going to measure the success of the experiment so assuming that the objective of the experiment is very clear and also assuming that you know the metric of success is already aligned on okay these are step number one and step number two that we discussed in our previous video then now is the time for us to dive into the design and the implementation of the experiment so number one question to answer under this step is what variables are we testing and how many variables are we testing so what do i mean by variables so basically if you're running a marketing campaign and your goal is to test different types of marketing offers then your variable here is marketing offer okay so that's the variable you are testing you want to see what marketing offer will do to some metric of outcome whether it's conversion or you know sales per customer or something like that so marketing offer so the idea is like you have to you have to really determine at this stage what variable are you testing for okay now maybe you are testing for only one variable in very complex experiment you are testing for three or four variables okay so this would determine whether you run a univariate type of testing or a multivariate type of testing okay so what is a multivariate uh, you know type of testing so maybe in addition to actually understanding the effect of marketing offer you also want to understand the effect of pricing or you also want to understand the effect of time of day okay now you have these multiple things you want to you want to test now you have to actually design uh, an experiment that will 
we we'll, we'll, we'll cater for this. Okay, we call this multivariate design of experiment. But in practice, we try to keep things as simple as possible. So in this process, I'll be using uh, the idea of a marketing offer uh, to illustrate, uh, you know, my my, my 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 thought here. So number one is determine, you know, which variables or how many variables we are testing, and then use that to to be sure whether you are running a univariate testing or multivariate testing. Okay. Number two is what are the treatment groups that you are going to really you know experiment on or what are the levels of your variable so you remember i said in number one that you know you need to determine what variable you are testing and then number two i'm saying what are the levels of the variable so what do i mean by the levels of the variable if the variable is a marketing offer the levels of the variable could be uh, you know 10 percent off so that's one level 20 percent off that's another level buy one get one free that's another level so that could be three levels uh, of the variable that you want to test okay so that's what i mean by the variables and this will actually help you understand how many treatment groups do you want or how many treatment group is needed for this experiment so in a very classic uh, business experiment where you have one variable uh, and then you're only testing two levels of this variable this is what we call uh, typically a b testing because we are just testing you know one marketing uh, you know you are testing on a marketing offer so that's one variable and you are testing maybe 10 percent off against buy one get one free so this is a simple a b test you have two groups you are testing one variable right so in this second step you think about all of these things you know the treatment uh, and the variable you also think about are we actually doing three or four levels of the same variable so are you doing uh, you know marketing offer but you have four different offers that you are testing people call this a b c d experiment if it is three groups on one variable they call it uh you know abc experiment again and if you want to learn more of course we can put uh you know some links on the video for you to really read more and go deeper okay so number one is you understand uh, basically what variables you are testing uh, and use that to determine if this is a univariate or multivariate type of test and then number two like i said it you you have to answer the question of what are the levels uh, of the variable you are testing or basically how many treatment groups uh, you know are you going to be having uh, and how are you going to be creating those treatment groups okay the third thing to consider is are you really looking to analyze the result broadly across the population or are you concerned about basically randomizing within different groups so what i mean by that is that at the end of the experiment do you want to understand for example you know the performance of this marketing offer on a segment okay compared to another segment if so you may be doing what we call uh, you know a randomized complete block design or basically you have to run an a b test within each segment so you may pick one segment call it uh, you know basically online customers and run you know a b test or the, you know create an a b test within that group and ha i have offline customers and create a b test within that group or maybe you have five segments you may want to create a b test within the five segments again it all depends on what your goal okay but this is one of the things you consider also in this uh, stage of your test uh, test or experimentation uh, planning okay now once you complete uh, basically all the things that you need in terms of you know your treatment your, your your variables your level of treatment you know and you think about your randomization then the next thing you have to think about uh, you know at this stage is basically um, how do you actually select the sample okay that is needed for this experiment now even this alone is a subject on its own but we are going to simplify it for you okay it's very important that in any experiment we have enough sample to really analyze and make conclusions and during the design of the experiment phase we also decide uh, the number of uh, you know samples or basically the subjects that we need to experiment on okay how do you go about doing that 
uh, number one you have to have what we call some baseline analysis you have to understand for example if it's a marketing offer and you are measuring sales per customer you need to understand on average what is our sales per customer okay then you also need to understand the standard deviation of your measurement of success because that will help you actually calculate you know the sample size that would be reasonable enough to really uh, have a conclusive experiment okay so understand your baseline numbers you know get your averages historically uh, and also get the variation or the standard deviation okay now if this is about you know some conversion rate or it's a proportion then of course once you get the proportion you can get the the standard deviation and all of those things from the proportion right if if you understand statistics i'm sure you kind of get the picture here but first get a baseline metric and then do some analysis to get to understand the variation then number two for sample size uh, selection you also have to decide the statistical significance that you want to use or your confidence level how confident do you want to be in your interpretation so uh, usually people choose 95 percent um, and once you have this 95 percent uh, you can use this in your sample size uh, calculation now if you have not uh, watched our video on statistical significance and what it really mean please i recommend you uh, to watch that video so i'm linking it here for you uh, but yeah you get your statistical significance level that you want to use uh, you understand your baseline metric then the next thing that you really need to understand um, or think about is what we call the minimum detectable effect okay the minimum detectable effect or the mde or effect size basically what is the size of the difference you want to see between two groups for you to say that okay there's really a difference you you need to come up with that minimum because that will also help you uh, determine the sample size okay and then finally uh, you need to do what we call power analysis or you need to kind of come up with your statistical power level that you want to use uh, what is statistical power in in simple terms this is basically how sensitive uh, you know you want your experiment to be in determining differences between your test group and the control group so, so once you get your you know baseline numbers you get your standard deviation uh, you get your statistical significance level which you set that uh, and then you basically get your effect size or minimum det detectable effect and finally you come up with the power uh, or the statistical power that you want to to get in your experiment you have everything you need now to actually what calculate the sample size okay how do you calculate the sample size i'm not going to go into the details of the math behind this but there are a lot of calculators online you can even go online google how do you estimate sample size in an experiment and then you know various calculators will come up with all the things that i've mentioned like you know minimum detectable effect standard deviation power uh, you know statistical significance level you input all of those uh, and then it will give you the minimum sample that you need to run the experiment and in practice it's always good to you know do maybe 10 percent more than the minimum sample size and of course the more the sample the better okay all of these things must be clearly documented as the design document of your experimentation okay so now once you go through the first step and understanding the variables uh, you know two knowing the levels of variables you are testing and three understanding your randomization whether you are randomizing across the population or you are randomizing within segment which we call within blocks uh, and then you determine your sample size you actually set you are set to actually implement your experiment now the next step is going to be actually implementing the experiment so you know selecting your sample if you are running an offline test maybe you have a database you can randomly select people from the database but if it's an online experiment for example in in an e-commerce setup uh, in retail then what you must do now is to work with your engineering team to set up the randomization sometimes they use uh, you know cookie ids or you know user uh, user ids uh, to to basically set up the randomization such that if a person is in this particular group you know then assign this treatment so how you truly select your samples and assign the treatment is the core of the implementation and usually you work with engineers or marketing people to do this but i hope this is clear because um ideally all you need to do is like 
put in some form of randomization so that you can say people in this group when they come you can even say the first the fit if you have five groups for example you can say every fit person you know you know have this first person will have this like in a randomized order okay so randomization is key and once all of this is done you know your experiment is running of course depending on the sample size um, you know if it's an online experiment you know you may run it for one week for two weeks until you get the size that you want if it's an offline experiment then you already select the size before even distributing uh, you know your experiment or your marketing office in my I think uh, this is this is a lot already but I hope this is very clear the goal of the designing and implementation of the experiment phase here is to come up with a clear plan and documentation of how you will actually implement the experiment that's number one answer all the questions of treatment sample size the versions of the experiment the randomization and truly implementing the randomization now randomization is key in in design of experiment and implementation of experiment if you don't randomize well then you can even comfortably analyze the result you can confidently analyze the result because the result may be biased based on who you put in the sample so it's very important that you randomize properly and if your goal is to do things within each segment you randomize also what within each segment so that you can have what conclusions but in practice we like to keep these things very simple so you always want to make sure that you are working with a statistician or you are working with a data scientist or you are working with a business analyst who actually understand how to design and run an experiment again i cannot emphasize this enough okay now once all of this is done you know you just wait and collect your data and then you are set to uh, actually analyze your experiment which i will do one video to just talk about analysis uh, of the experiment uh, i hope this is very helpful to you uh, again these are the five steps i'm putting it here on the screen for you these are the five steps uh, to really uh, you know conduct an experiment and we are talking about step number three here okay and then under this step number three where you are talking about designing and implementing the experiment these five things are the questions that you want to make sure you answer clearly so i am putting this again here on the screen for you uh, for you to really understand this and again documentation is important every design must come with a document so that everybody is fully aware and business stakeholders if you are watching this video this is why it takes time for your data team to really come out with a design it's not like oh yeah i want to run an experiment and all of a sudden we start no there are a lot of thinking and uh, you know things that go into designing a very impactful and valid experiment so you need to allow time for all of these these designs to be done for some analysis to be done for sample sizes to be calculated uh, and all of that okay uh, all right thank you